Well, for our first story, the Accra Metropolitan Assembly will be shutting down six public toilets at Old Fadama here in Accra, operating the outlawed pan latrine system. The existence of the toilets were highlighted in a joint news feature, a date with the latrine man, several years after they were banned. This was after the Accra mayor, Mohammed Niejesewa, only last year proclaimed that the assembly had successfully phased out the pan latrine system. He explains in an interview the discovery of the pan latrines by Joy News came as a surprise not only to him but to the entire assembly. For the issues in context, Old Fadama is an informal settlement that has a population of over 100,000. We admit that there are issues of uh, sewage systems, issues of electricity, issues of water, issues of sanitation. All these issues that really characterizes an informal settlement as, are, are there. So we will, not, we will not run away from the fact that uh, there are no issues there. But somewhere last year, we detected about 40 of them. And I can also. 40 of, of them. But I can tell you that. The uh, public, these public I toilets can, using pan like. I can tell you that uh, we worked on it and then 33 had been converted into water closet. Because we are also doing what we call the Gamma Project on Sanitation, where the World Bank had, is supporting us to uh, pay half of the beneficiaries, we just pay half of the amount the that's of, of uh, But and, the, and as I speak to you now, in January, it used to be 4,000 Ghana cities, and then the beneficiary household, the household beneficiary will pay 2,000 Ghana cities. But we have reduced it to 1,100 Ghana cities this year, and we have even further reduced it to 500 and 550 Ghana cities. So the once you pay your 500, in fact, we are not even waiting for you to pay your 550 Ghana cities. Once you, you start paying, the contractor is obliged to start the construction for you. All right. So all these are attempts to eradicate the pan lattice in the system. What do we do about this particular situation that we're talking about? And the journalist who worked on it, worked on the story, says he identified six of them. Yes. That's why I'm saying that uh, we had identified 40. about 40 earlier, which we have worked on it to uh, reduce it to seven as of last year. Then if she, he had identified six, it means that one had been worked on on my blind side, which of course is an improvement. But we want to get to zero. We want to make sure that people ease themselves in, a, in an environment which is very clean and you don't see pan latrines in the system. So it's something that we worked on it so um, work three days, on, uh, three days ago. Of course, the public health department. The whole of last week, our public health department uh, mobilized all the environmental health officers within the car metro from everywhere, together with national service personnel and our metro guards. And then uh, we deployed them into the Ashidu Ketege. And Ashidu Ketege includes Old Fadama. Um, to ensure that the people comply with the sanitation bylaws. And that is the information that they even got. So yesterday, they were supposed to go back onto the fort because they also detected this uh, sex. They were supposed to go back to the fort. But it's an, it's an area that um, when you are going, you also have to make sure that uh, you engage other stakeholders, including the police, to be able to, to enforce your bylaw. You mean it's virtually like a no-go area? I haven't said so, but it's, I'm saying that uh, it's an Probably area... Probably that's what you mean. In a, it, that's, your, that's your opinion. It's an area... Parliament has approved the nomination of Martin Amidou, a special prosecutor. This was despite efforts by the Member of Parliament for Bogatanga East, Dr. Dominic Ayene, a former uh, Deputy Attorney General himself, to halt the process by filing a suit about his uh, eligibility at the court after stiff opposition from the majority. The Speaker eventually ruled that the House could go ahead and approve the nomination. Parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opukugapo has more. Parliament Appointment Committee today presented its report to the House recommending the approval of Martin Amidu as Special Prosecutor. This recommendation was by consensus, but the committee's report had indicated that one MP, Al-Hassan Suhini, had voted against the nomination. 
Well, Committee Chairman Joseph Oseusu indicated that Al Hassan Suhini has subsequently withdrawn his objection to the appointment. I seek leave to remove an overwhelming majority decision and replace that with consensus in the House to approve the nominee. So, Mr. Speaker, with the permission, I delete an overwhelming majority decision and substitute all those with consensus. Joseph Oseusu then eventually moved the motion to allow for the House to debate the approval of the report. MP for Bogatanga East, Dr. Dominic Haini, raised an objection, insisting the House cannot go ahead with the debate and approval because the issue is pending at the Supreme Court. With reference to Order 93, Sub Order 1 of the Standing Orders of this House, Mr. Speaker, it provides that. And I read, reference shall not be made to any matter on which judicial decision is pending in such a way as may, in the opinion of Mr. Speaker, prejudice the interests of the parties to the action. Mr. Speaker, I'm drawing the House's attention to a suit that is pending before the Supreme Court. Any comments, whether adverse or commendatory, that are made in this matter may send the wrong signal to the Supreme Court with respect to this matter. But Majority Leader Seiche Mensabuntu insisted the point of order was incompetent because there have been precedence of issues pending before the court being dealt with in the chamber. If Parliament went ahead to approve it, and in the wisdom of the Supreme Court, they felt that the matter was not right, and they ruled whatever Parliament did would then be considered as null and void. It's, it's part of the application. So why, why this? The speaker admits that this application is a complete abuse of the processes of this house. Anytime anybody feels aggrieved um, and a matter is before the house, that person then will rush to the Supreme Court and tie the hands of this house from, from, from considering that, that point. The speaker, that cannot be right. Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Kwe, eventually ruled that there wasn't enough substance to allow for them to pull brakes on the approval process. There must be mutual respect between all arms of government, the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. There is nothing before me this morning to persuade me that the matter allegedly before the court or any matter regarding sale or any order made by the court alleged today is such that Parliament cannot do this work. A motion to be competently before this honorable house must be moved and seconded. Thereafter, a member may object to anything or make any reference to any demand when moved and seconded. Otherwise, if you anticipate wrongly, this is misconceived, it is premature, it is incompetent procedurally. The motion is accordingly rejected. Following a debate on the report, the speaker eventually announced the approval of the recommendation from the committee. Dr. Dominic Haine insisted the speaker's ruling was wrong. Unlike um, a judicial body, the ruling of the speaker is a political statement because we are a political body. Um, a, a, the ruling of a judge may be challenged on appeal or on review, but the ruling of the speaker may, I mean, cannot be challenged. So it means that the report has been adopted. The standing orders make provisions to challenge the speaker's Yeah, ruling, you, can come by, you can come by substantive motion. You know, to challenge Are you ready to do that? I'm not ready to do that. I don't want to be seen as someone, an obstructionist. 
you know, who is simply obstructing the process because as is, you know, out in the public domain, we are afraid of uh, the special prosecutor. There's nothing like that. We, nobody is afraid of If I were afraid of him, I would not have taken him on the way I have done. Attorney General Gloria Kofo says government will not hesitate to revoke the appointment if the Supreme Court rules against them. It is true that an action has been brought in the Supreme Court against the nomination of Mr. Amidou, a special prosecutor. But Parliament has not been injuncted. The mere initiation of a suit does not serve as an injunction. In the absence of that, I think Parliament is in right in proceeding with the appointment. Dr. Ayri cited the examples of the appointment of um, Mohamed Moumini and a number of others and said that in those scenarios, and even the 40s deal debate, you know, Parliament put breaks because... Said could. Then it leaves it to the discretion. If he says could, it means that Parliament, for whatever reason, could decide to stay at hands. But in the absence of an injunction, Parliament is free to proceed, and they are right in doing so. so what could this mean if, for example, the, you know, the Supreme Court eventually rules that uh, the approval was wrong because it was really over age? Appointments are always revoked, but touch wood. I am confident that Mr. Amidou's uh, appointment will be confirmed by the Supreme Court. From Parliament House in Accra, my name is Joseph Opokugapo. And just some few uh, meters away, some nurses who are unemployed have been picketing. And government is already appealing to some members of the 2016 batch of unemployed nurses from public institutions to end their picketing at the premises of the Ministry of Health. Speaking at a news conference here in Accra, the Information Minister, Mustafa Hamid, assured the government had made provision in the 2018 budget for the recruitment of some 32,000 health personnel. Uh, Mr. Hamid is also assuring the nurses they will soon be employed after the completion of a validation process. First, let's listen to the concerns of the unemployed nurses picketing at the health ministry. Since uh, uh, our year of completion, we completed 2016, and we have submitted several petitions to the ministry concerning our posting, and they have given us sick promises, sick promises sick every day, every day that we come. They will say that they are working on our things, they are working on our issues. Every day, that's what they keep on telling us. We came out with a press release that we want them to state clearly that when are we going to be posted. It's affecting us so much psychologically, emotionally, everything we do. Because um, your parents have suffered enough to send you to school, complete and come back and put your burdens on them. In fact, it's not easy at all. Sometimes we, are, we get frustrated. My mom used to call me a bit because I always go to her to request for money. So if I don't ask money from her, I will not get money to buy anything for myself. So we are pleading on the government that they should do something fast to post all of us. And I also plead on them that they shouldn't pay nurses to stay in the house for long again. Because the more we stay in the house, the more we forget things. So that's why I'm begging the government to work, to post all of us immediately. We can now hear from the Information Minister Mustafa Hamid assuring the unemployed nurses they would be engaged soon. Government wishes to appeal to them to discontinue the picketing and go home whilst the Minister for Health works to get them placement as has been assured. It is important to state that when we came into office in 2017, there was a backlog of graduates from 2015 to 2015 to be absorbed. As we speak, nearly all those in that category have been absorbed. Since 2017, government has engaged more than 16,000 of those who graduated between 2012 and 2015. It is also significant to state that the government of Ghana has since 2014 stopped the policy of bonding student nurses, which basically means that government is no longer under an obligation to engage them when they finish school. 
even so, government has made provision in the 2018 budget for the recruitment of 32,000 health personnel, including 27,000 for various categories of nurses alone. This being done, sorry, this is being done with the 2016 badge of graduates from government institutions who are currently the ones that are picketing at the Ministry of Health. We are therefore appealing to them whilst also assuring them that we are working to get them engaged as soon as our validation processes are complete. However, in an earlier interview with Maxwell Agbagba, the Minister of Health, Kwekwa Jimamenu, stated he is unable to give a timeline on when the Minister of Finance would finish with the financial clearance needed to pave way for the employment of the nurses. They are sure that they will be posted very soon, right? Yeah. But before you finished and you got that assurance, mm. some people had been assured earlier. So is the financial clearance bit the only thing um, delaying the process for the 2016 batch right now? No, those nothing picketing. is it. Mm. The only thing is that we want to find out those who have sat home for nearly five years, mm. whether they are still waiting for jobs or not. We don't want to leave them behind. Yeah, so for the 2016 batch, by middle of... For them, I don't see their problem. Mm. I don't want how, to how so Let me tell you honestly. Yeah. Now, I will do an application to finance. I think I've even got a draft, I mean, request there. I don't control finance and their timing and what they do. Last year, from experience, at times they give financial clearance and it will take effect in three months, yeah. right? Because they are running the budget. And when you're implementing budget, you want to make sure that you don't have overruns in certain quarters. Mm -hmm. And I don't speak for them, so I can control them. Mm -hmm. So if I tell you that I can give benchmarks, I don't think I'll be getting it right. Okay. A chips compound constructed for the Kong electoral area by the Solar District Assembly four years ago is still under lock and key, forcing the people in the area to travel about some 26 kilometers to Tuna, or in some cases, about 50, 57 kilometers to Solar to seek medical attention. Well, many pregnant women have had to give birth halfway through these journeys because of the distance involved. Even though the chiefs and people of the area have volunteered to finish the facility, it is yet to be opened. Assemblyman for the Kong Electoral Area, Hamid Mutalim, said the community has recorded several deaths due to lack of a health facility in the area. We have uh, recorded a lot of deaths just because of uh, this, uh, I'm talking of this uh, health facility not being in use. Whenever a woman is in labor, anytime or most of the times, the woman or the women that we do transport to Tuna, some of them on our way to that particular facility, they, 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 they give birth on the way. And sometimes they, they unfortunate things happens. Sometimes we lost the, the, the baby and even the women, some of them, bleeds to death so it's, it's 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 a very worrying situation that uh, we are facing in uh, kong here mr mutalim said snake bites are common in the area and when it happens they suffer the same fate and other cases too or instances where we do have snake bites it's also another challenge in this community kong anytime somebody had a snake bite we have to carry that person to Tuna, as I mentioned earlier on. And when we get to Tuna too, they will refer that person. They will tell us that uh, they have no medicine to cure that particular uh, snake bite or that particular uh, this, uh, disease. So they will either refer us to Bole or even Wa sometimes. So we are calling on government uh, to come to our aid and other philanthropists. We are suffering. People of Kong are suffering. A nursing mother, Amina Amidu, said she gave birth halfway through the journey to the health center when she was in labor. She called for support for the opening of the clinic to reduce the problems they encounter. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll help her. Uh, so, say, I'm going to go away and cry. Just say, do you have a say? No, I'm going to cry. So, I'm going to cry. Amina 
and Tabu or how could Druk and Swan or Woo or Honum. Say, O Trinia Cora, Cora, and Om Fano. Missy Acra, where Tama had me called Doctor Sam and call me called Woo, crying so. Ewa, many bear my back or cry or burn him, and to your brapa, your hospital, I see. Ye moon or moon to me, be ya ya. Say, Woo, I will buy ya, yeah. Just say, Woo, I would deny you what she. No, I could do not. Ebi ya ube kwa kwa do na wia bo sa ube ube kwa kwa do kura no na wukura na wiyale eka kura no ho so amu abu abi ya mume bo ya na ai ha oni so enchwa ya so. So let's look at um, this before we go. The Volta Region Police Command and the command of the 66th Artillery Regiment has launched an operation called Operation Calm Life in the Volta Region. The operation um, so aims to combat and also reduce crime as well as flash out criminal elements from communities in the region. Fred Kwame Sari has this report. <laughs> The Operation Calm Life Task Force is a joint military police contingent. Five hard body vehicles have been allocated for the operation to enhance mobility of the contingent and ensure swift response to crime alerts across the region. As part of the operation, a joint operation center connected with a video surveillance system has been set up at the Volta Regional Police Headquarters. The unit picks feed from a networked CCTV camera system situated at vantage points in major cities in the region to help monitor human activities and easily identify miscreants and wrongdoers in the society. The Volta Police Command has also purchased a drone to help in tracing and trailing criminals who would bolt after committing their crimes. Speaking at the launch, the Volta Regional Police Commander, ACP Nana Asimahine, noted the operation would focus on areas identified to have high incidents of crime. As part of elaborate plans to ensure the total success of this exercise, a joint operation center, we call it JOC, under the command of a senior police officer has been established at the regional police headquarters, who, where all activities of the operation, operational teams will be coordinated. By this address, I urge all in Sandri to lend your support to this worthy cause so that the people of the Volta region will go about their various socio-economic activities without fear. I must tell you that I have personally acquired a drone which we showcased here to support the Christian Khan Life. The Commander Rear of the 66th Artillery Regiment, Major Edward Apia, lauded government for the initiative and called on the public to support the security services with information to ensure success of the operation. Warming that we have met here this afternoon to perform a simple but important task. You will all agree with me that Operation Come Life, which we are relaunching today, has, no, has not been so active due to some challenges. Let me, on behalf of the seven garrison of the Ghana Armed Forces and the 66th Artillery Regiment, thank the government for the support we have received so far, so far as the, this operation is concerned. With this support, we stand ready to support our police counterparts in ensuring that crime is not given any space in the region. Let me use this opportunity to assure the local population of the region the commitment of the military to ensuring that crime in whatever form is brought to its barest minimum so that you'll be able to move about with your daily activities in peace. As a military, we can play our part, but without the support and cooperation of the local population, this operation cannot succeed. I therefore call on the people of the Volta region to grant the tax force all the support we need in order to keep you safe in the region and the country as a whole. I once again wish to thank the government for the providing us the needed vehicles to carry this operation, to carry out this operation, and wish to assure you, Deputy Regional Minister, who is standing in for the Regional Minister, of our judicious use of these vehicles, and also to ensure that they are all 
well maintained at all times. Thank you all and may God bless us all. Thank you very much. There was a joint police and military route march through the principal streets of Ho to exhibit the readiness of the security services in combating crime.